Hello there girls and boys, today I got a really special surprise for you, because everything that you have heard so far, with the only exception being the drum machine, was designed and created with just one virtual instrument, and the best part, it comes for free, so let's find out! Welcome back to the Armory, girls and boys! Today we will be talking about this amazing and simple to use virtual instrument that comes built in with Logic Pro X, the name RetroSynth. So without further ado, let's get into Logic now. Welcome back to Logic Pro X, girls and boys. What we got in front of us is the interface of RetroSynth. As I told you, it's a fairly simple synthesizer. It's not as complex as some of the other synthesizers that you have seen me using. And in general, uh, you will get the grasp of it quite fast. Actually, I think that this is one of the best uh, ways to get into sound modeling and sound design. Since it's so simple to use that it, it's going to teach you every single nook and cranny that you need to know in order to understand how synthesis works in general. So, here we got the oscillator section, which is the first part of, of our synthesizer. Uh, this is where the sound is being created, and this synthesizer comes with four different synth engines, which means four different ways to create sound. Then the next section is the filter section, which is a filter, it's getting rid of certain frequencies, so that way we can sculpt the sound the way we, we see fit. The next section is the amplifier, which is controlling the volume, and also it's, it has a built-in a, a built sound, sound wave generator, which means another sound source. And last section is going to be um, an effects section, which allows us to use a ridiculous amount of effects, such as chorus and flanger. And that's it. Well, guys, it, it comes for free. You shouldn't be that picky. Then, then the next section is the, the modulation section, which we have access to controlling the glide and how the interaction between the keyboard and the, and the synthesizer behaves. Then we have our modulation section, with which, is, which is comprised of an LFO and a vibrato. Then we got the filter envelope and an amplifier envelope, which controls and shapes the way the synthesizer comes out of the, of the envelope and also in the case of a filter envelope, it's affecting the way the filter behaves. It's as simple as that. But also, it has a secret panel. And I'm going to tell you where it is. As soon as you go to this little button that says settings, BAM! We got access to way more controllers. In here, we have the, the way, the controller section, which allows us to control the way our mod wheel, pitch, and, and how our keyboard reacts to the synthesizer, or if I say it correctly, it, how the synthesizer reacts to our keyboard. And also we get a, a really interesting section, which is my favorite out of bunch. It's this one, the global, because here you can change the amount of voices that are, that are creating the sound, and you can go up to 16 and just for, uh, on just to just one, one voice. And you can, you, you can say it as a mono synthesizer or, or as a legato synthesizer. In my opinion, Legato is a little bit more useful than Mono, because Legato allows you to do this. And, 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 and for instance, Mono, it's a little bit more boring. Then we have the voice detune, which is quite cool, because let's say that you are using 16 voices, and you play a chord like this. I'm gonna go a little bit higher. Huh. That's way better, isn't it? What it is doing is detuning each of the voices just a tiny bit. So that way it's creating a pseudo chorus effect, which is quite useful and really nice. And also we have access to controlling the, 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 stereo, the, stereo, the stereo image of the synthesizer. Really nice. And the last section, the amount of voices that are going to be stacked one upon the other. Just by messing around with this section, we already have a great sound. Uh, now, we're gonna try to recreate one of the sounds from the song that you already heard. So, first things first, what we're gonna do is go back to our uh, default settings, 
Bam. Boring once again. But now we're gonna recreate the sound of the bass line. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna do to recreate the bass line is this. Once we went back to the default settings, we should get something that sounds like this. Boring! But we're gonna change that right now. So, first of all, uh, for this sound, I decided to just use one oscillator, oscillator one, and instead of using the, the, the sawtooth waveform, I decided to use just the square one. To my ears, it has a little bit more of mm, you know what I mean, like a little bit more bassy sounding. Then we're gonna go straight to our, um, we're gonna add a little bit of fender, and we're gonna start to add a little bit of the rate. Okay, we are getting somewhere, but I think we got, we have to add a little bit more to the mix. Okay. Also, since we're dealing with that with a with a baseline, we're gonna use the sine wave generator that comes built in with the amplifier section. And that thing is gonna add a little bit of a sub frequency. You will see. Can you hear it? It's like a little bit more uh, greasy, if you know what I mean. Then we're gonna move into the LFO section. We're gonna use the LFO as a way to control the way our our oscillator behaves. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna change the shape all the way to the LFO. So this means that it's gonna be controlled only by the LFO. Okay. And then we're gonna get something that sounds like this. Not a big difference yet. Now we're gonna change the rate of our LFO. But also, first of all, we're gonna change how much of the LFO is being used. This is important because in here you can change and set the amount of, uh, of the, you, you can change the starting point of the LFO. Huh, I told you, it will change. Also, in here, this, this is a funny thing to do. You can change how or, or how you can use your hardware in order to control that, uh, that this, this particular um, a fader. You can use your mod wheel as it is by default. Quite useful. You can also use the aftertouch of your keyboard if your keyboard has aftertouch or a combination of both. So for the time being, I'm gonna leave it using the aftertouch because why not? Now we got somewhere. And now the next thing to do is this. You're gonna change the rate because it's it's changing quite quite fast and I don't like that. So let's do it. Nice. Now, the next one, we're gonna work on the filter envelope. And this is quite important because we're gonna affect the way our, our filter is reacting while we play. So first of all, I'm gonna go overboard, because why not? And now we're gonna work on the shape of the filter. Once you crank up the envelope knob, you, have to, you, you should get something that sounds like this. It has a little bit more of higher end energy and it's more powerful. But it's getting it's cutting quite fast, so I don't like that. So in order to control that, we're gonna change the filter envelope and you will see how it changes. It's nice, but also this is quite important. I was forgetting about it. Since we're dealing with the baseline, I'm gonna set it to legato. This is more for uh, performance purposes than anything else. But also keep in mind that once you set it like that, you won't be able to play chords. But 
but that's cool. Now, we are almost there, but I have a huge problem with the way it is reacting, because as soon as I press the key, you can hear the artifact, right? There is a little bit of a clicking sound. The reason for that happening is this. We got to change the envelope, the, the, the amplifier section. It's quite fast. The attack is quite fast. So in order to combat the clicking, we, the only thing that you gotta do is this. We're gonna slow down a little bit the attack, just a tiny bit, something the likes of this. And voila, we got the baseline. As you can see, girls and boys, RetroSynth is an amazing synthesizer, but we are just getting started. In the next installment, I'm gonna show you how I created my path, and I'm gonna give you a little bit more tricks regarding the bass. Until next time, I will see you when I see you, but before you go, just leave a like. If you want to have any more information regarding RetroSynth, leave a comment below, and don't let anybody tell you what to dream about. I will see you when I see you. Yeah.